Uh, how's it going, people? Uh. You are about to experience the all-living mystery which reaches from the deepest in your mind. Have a little more hemp ale. To Well, I'll be drinking scotch in this chapter anyway, but it's nice to have a beer to keep me company. Alright, there's like one drink in this chapter, unless I think of something creative, and you know I'm going to do that. So, they're awful fond of the word expedient in this book, because they're in such a fucking hurry, I guess. <laughs> so, I'm going to drink to expedient. Okay. All right. All right. It's too bad I can't finish uh, the Book of Alma before I leave, but my flight's on Wednesday morning, and I'm not drinking every day. <laughs> Even though I am on vacation right now, I got so much to do. But, I'm going to get some of this done. Oh, hang on. Let's read the masthead. 34 of Alma. Amulek's testimony. Oh, goody, goody. The great and last sacrifice. I wonder who they're talking about. How mercy satisfies justice. Repentance, not to be procrastinated, because it's expedient. <laughs> All right, verse one. And now it came to pass. Oh, that after Alma had spoken these words unto them. You know, about blind faith. This does fit the, the definition of blind faith. I mean, I know faith means trust, but there's unreasoning trust, and then there's, well, trust built on experience and uh, trial and error, wisdom, and maybe a gambler's spirit. But no, they're just asking you to believe before you believe. And that's what Alma had to say in the last few chapters. I recommend you check those out, especially 32. Yeah. After he spoken those these words unto them, he sat down upon the ground, and Amulek arose. Tag team action. Uh, and began to teach them, saying, Two. My brethren, I think that it is impossible that ye should be ignorant of the things which have been spoken concerning the coming of Christ. Who is taught by us to be the Son of God? Yea, I know that these things were taught unto you bountifully before your dissension from among us. Three. And as ye have desired of my beloved brother that he should make known unto you what ye should do because of your afflictions, and he has spoken somewhat unto you, unto you, to prepare your mind, yea, and he hath exhorted you unto faith and to patience. I'll just, yeah, you guys be patient, but hurry. For, yea, even that ye would have so much faith as even to plant the word in your hearts. Yeah, they want your heart, not your brain. 
They just want you to feel that ye may try the experiment of its goodness. Yeah, we're experimenting in faith. Just try it for a little while. Yeah, experiment of its goodness. Five. And we have beheld that the great question which is in your minds. Oh, yeah. Minds, they have questions, don't they? Yeah. Stick with hearts. Yeah, <laughs> because of your minds. Is whether the word be in the Son of God or whether there shall be no Christ. beheld that my brother has proven unto you in many instances that the word in Christ the word is in Christ unto salvation seven my brother has called upon the words of Zenos and that redemption cometh through the Son of God and Zenos is ancient even by the standards of people living in uh, about B.C. 74, according to the footnote. Yeah, they think this guy is ancient, and he's talking about the Son of God coming. Where does it ever say that in the Old Testament? Except when they're talking about Hezekiah. <laughs> yeah. They wanted a king. <laughs> what the fuck? Instead, they got Sky Daddy Jr., <laughs> the masochist. Uh, yeah, Zenos was talking about that way the fuck back. But the Son of God. And also upon the words of Zenoch. I've heard of it, Enoch, but I haven't heard of Zenoch. And also, he hath a Appealed unto Moses. All right, finally, someone I've heard about, but Moses predicted J.C. by making a brass serpent that became a dumb altar until the time of Hezekiah. That has something to do with Jesus being born? Are we saying, yep, it's paganism? Especially the more primitive you get. Catholicism and all their saints and statues and stuff. And I dig Catholics, by the way, so. I like Mormons, too. It's just J dubs I can't seem to stand. <laughs> and most Seven day Adventists that I've met. But Mormons are actually kind of cool. Jack Mormons are crazy. The ones I've met. Wow. I'm sure there's some regular Jack Mormons out there, but I mean, I've met ones that are like. <laughs> Tell me some other sins to try. <laughs> I've known quite a few. <laughs> Moses. Yeah, he, he... And also he has appealed unto Moses to prove that these things are true. Because he built a brass snake staff. Stuck it in the ground and made people look at it. Eight. And now, behold... I will testify unto you of myself that these things are true. Behold, I say unto you that I do know that Christ shall come among the children of men to talk upon them, to take upon them the transgressions of his people, and that he shall atone for the sins of the world. For the Lord God hath spoken it. Doesn't make a fucking bit of sense. <laughs> Alright. Nine. For it is expedient. And I'm drinking to expedient now. But there's actually quite a few, so I'm going to take big ones. That's good. 
Oops. Oh well, I'm gonna have to replace this book before the series is out. Nine, for it is expedient that an atonement should be made for, according to the great plan of the eternal God, there must be an atonement made, or else all mankind must unavoidably perish. Yea, all are hardened, yea, all are fallen and are lost, and must perish, except it be through the atonement which it is expedient should be made. I don't know, all of a sudden this doesn't sound like a great idea. <laughs> I think I'll just hang on to this. Alright. What do you think? Good enough? I'm pouring the next one. Ugh. Expedient. Um, ten, for it is expedient, see, uh -oh. Oh. that was good, only with scotch, this scotch, for it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice. Yay! Not a sacrifice of man, but of a man, apparently. Although all sacrifices are usually burnt offerings, aren't they? They didn't burn JC as far as I know. Just saying. Every human sacrifice I've ever, ever heard of was involving burning. Not just capital punishment. That was in vogue at the time. Neither of beast, neither of any manner of fowl. This is Grateful Dead playing the Twilight Zone soundtrack. The one from the 80s. Ah, I love that stuff. Yeah, neither of any manner of fowl, meaning birds. For it shall not be a human sacrifice, but it's going to be a human sacrifice. But it must be an infinite and eternal sacrifice. You're twisted. God, grovel a little bit, won't you? Ugh. going to bed early at night. It's only around 8 o'clock right now. 11. Now, there is not any man that can sacrifice his own blood, which will atone for the sins of another. That's the way I figure it. Now, if a man murdereth, behold, will our law which is just, take the life of his brother? I say unto you, nay. He didn't say it unto ye, he said it unto you. Well, but the law requireth the life of him who hath murdered. Therefore, there can be nothing which is short of an infinite atonement, which will suffice for the sins of the world. <sighs> Thirteen. Therefore, it is expedient Maybe a bad idea. Therefore, 
it is expedient that there should be a great and last sacrifice. And then shall there be, there be, or it is expedient. Uh, there should be a stop to the shedding of blood. Then shall the law of Moses be fulfilled. Yay! It shall be all fulfilled, every jot and tittle. <laughs> and none shall be shall have passed away. Wow, that sound is so scriptural. <laughs> Fourteen. And behold, this is the whole meaning of the law. Every wit pointing to that great and last sacrifice. And that great and last sacrifice will be the Son of God. Yay! Infinite and eternal. Forever and ever. That's all. Fifteen. And thus it shall bring salvation to all those who shall believe on his name. This being the intent of this last sacrifice to bring about the bowels of mercy which overpowereth justice and bringeth about means unto men that they may have faith unto repentance. That was almost poetic. Whatever the fuck it meant. Sixteen. <laughs> and thus mercy can satisfy the demands of justice and encircles them in the arms of the arms of safety while he that exercises no faith under repentance is exposed to the whole law of the demands of justice therefore only unto him that has faith unto repentance is brought about the great and eternal plan of redemption. Ugh. Seventeen. Therefore, may God grant unto you, my brethren, that ye may bring in, bring to a may bring to exercise your faith unto repentance, that ye began to call upon his holy name, that he would have mercy upon you. 18. Yea, cry unto him for mercy, for he is mighty to save. 19. Yea, Humble yourselves, I mean, yay, humble yourselves, and continue in prayer unto him. Yea, humble yourself, 19. Yea, humble yourselves and continue in prayer unto him. 20. Cry unto him when ye are in your fields. Yay! <laughs> this is kicking my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Over all your flocks. Ew. Twenty. Cry unto him in your houses, 
Yay! Over all your household, both morning, midday, and evening. 22. Yay! Cry unto him against the power of your enemies. 23. Yay! Cry unto him against the devil! Who is an enemy to all righteousness? 24. Cry unto him over the crops of your fields, that ye may prosper in them. 25. Cry over the flocks of your fields, that they may increase. <laughs> 26. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But this is not all. Ye must pour out your souls in your closets. I mean, really. I think the wrong people have been in the closet all along. I mean, this is ancient shit telling them. Get in your fucking closet and stop showing off in public, you dickheads. <laughs> in your secret places. And in your wilderness. If you have one. Uh, <laughs> 27, yay, and when you do not cry unto the Lord, let your hearts be full, drawn out in prayer unto him continually for your welfare. A little insecurity syndrome there. You can like, take care of some of the shit yourself, you know. Then again, I know there's a lot of Mormons that probably haven't read this part, and they're just, like, taking care of their business anyway. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh, there we go. And also for the welfare of those who are around you. 28. And now, behold, my beloved brethren, I say unto you... Do not suppose that this is all. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Hip ale. Good shit, man. Humboldt, baby. Love it. 28. And now, behold, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, do not suppose that this is all. For after ye have done all these things, if ye turn away the needy and the naked, I never turn away the naked. Well, depends. I mean, it is case specific. Uh. Uh, yeah, turn away the needy and the naked. Depends on what they need and what they look like naked, I guess. <laughs> and visit not the sick and afflicted, and impart of your substance. Don't forget to do, to do that. <laughs> if ye have to any who stand in need, I could use a little. I say unto you, if ye do not any of these things, <laughs> behold, your prayer is in vain. You've been wasting your time if you missed one of those steps. Get your BOM out. Reread it, guys. Everybody should read this book. Drunk. On video. Uh, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, uh, your prayer is in vain and availeth you nothing. Oh, oh shit. And ye are as hypocrites who deny the faith. They're as bad as an atheist? Wait a minute. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm up front, biatch. <laughs> 29. Therefore, 
If ye do not remember to be charitable, ye are as dross. All right, we're back to dross. This is what I remember. Which the refiners do cast out, it being of no worth. Yeah, I read up on that. As a matter of fact, Mark Twain talked about it in Roughing It. He did a little silversmithing. It was too much like work, so he quit. <laughs> but he talked about the dross. And this doesn't make sense, this part, because of what he said. And is trodden under foot of men. Uh-uh, nobody would step in that shit. <sighs> 30. And now, my brethren, I would that after ye have received so many witnesses, all in the same gold book, seeing that the Holy Scriptures testify of these things, ye come forth and bring fruit unto repentance. 31. Yea, I would that ye would come forth and harden not your hearts any longer. For behold, now is the time and the day of your salvation. And therefore, if ye will repent and harden not your hearts by using your brain, immediately shall the great plan of redemption be brought before you. <laughs> 32. For behold, this life is the time for men to prepare to meet God. Yay! Behold, the day of this life is the time for men to perform their labors. Get to work. 33. And now, as I said unto you before, as ye have had so many witnesses before, he said all this. All right, fine. Uh, witnesses. Therefore, I beseech of you that ye do not procrastinate the day of your repentance until the end. For after this day of life, which is given us to prepare for eternity, behold, if we do not improve our time while in this life, well, I agree with that part. Always seek to improve your life. Definitely. And your mind. Just to try to improve your life. Definitely. All right. And cometh, then cometh the night of darkness, wherein there can be no labor performed. 34. Ye cannot say... When ye are brought to that awful crisis, that I will repent, that I will return to my God. That, you know, invisible sky daddy uh, and his kid. Nay, ye cannot say this, for that same spirit with which doth possess your bodies at the time that ye go out of this life, that same spirit will have power to possess your body in that eternal world. Then it won't be me anymore. So fuck it anyway. For behold, if ye procrastinated the day of your repentance, even until death, behold, Ye have become subjected to the spirit of the devil, and he doth seal you his spirit. Yes. Uh, therefore, the spirit of the Lord hath withdrawn from uh -oh. you, not ye. 
man hath no place in you. And the devil hath all power over you. And this is the final state of the wicked. 36. And this I know because the Lord hath said he dwelleth not in unholy temples. But in the hearts of the righteous doth he dwell. Yay! And he hath also said that the righteous shall sit down in his kingdom and go no more out. Oh, really? So once you're in his kingdom, you can't leave into your own thing for eternally and for all the, all time? <laughs> so you're a slave forever. And you like that. Wow. You got to stay in his kingdom and go no more out. But the garments should be made white through the blood of the Lamb. 37. And now, my beloved brethren. I desire that ye should remember these things. That ye should work out your salvation with fear before God. Sounds healthy. And that ye should no more deny the coming of Christ. Because he's capitalized. 38. That ye contend no more against the Holy Ghost. <laughs> They're back to the Holy Ghost. They were using the Holy Spirit for a while. But that ye receive it, that Holy Ghost. And take upon you the name of Christ, that ye humble yourselves even to the dust. So even after you're dead, you have to stay humble until you're dust. And all these people like going for the expensive, expensive embalming treatment. Treatment. See, I'm gonna be cremated, so I'm ahead of you guys. Dust. Bang. <laughs> And worship God in whatsoever place ye may be in, in spirit and in truth, and that ye live in thanksgiving daily. Wow, every day is Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> For the many mercies and blessings which he doth bestow upon you, 39. Yay! Uh, and I also exhort you, my brethren, that ye be watchful unto prayer continually. Wow. So you guys cannot pray the Muslims. They do it five times a day. I thought that was kind of excessive. Continually? Do Mormons pray continually? Chime in. Open channel. Say whatever the fuck you want. That ye may not be led away by the temptation of the devil. That he may not overpower you. That ye may not become his subjects at the last day, for behold, he rewardeth you no good thing. My chair squeaking. I'll let you know if it's real. Forty! And now, my beloved brethren, I would exhort that ye have patience, but hurry up. 
and that ye bear with all manner of afflictions. Have patience for that sort of shit. That ye do not revile against those who do cast you out because of your exceeding poverty. This ye become sinners like unto them. 41. But that ye have patience and bear with these afflictions with a firm hope that ye shall one day rest from your afflictions. And that's it for 34. See you guys in 35. Peace. The fuck out. Have a wonderful. Whatever the fuck it is you're having. I mean, I really mean that. Bye. And buy the soundtrack if you get a chance. Love it. Grateful Dead doing The Twilight Zone. Ha <laughs> ha